Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to chapter 26. Um, the last chapter. And it says, Lord, teach us to pray a scripture story. Look at the picture of Jesus, the teacher, our master, the master teacher. It says, Lord, teach us to pray a scripture story. If we must know how to pray or learn rightly how to pray, Jesus must be our teacher. So we are going to explore, Lord, teach us how to pray. And before we continue, as we always do, we like to begin with our prayer. And so we pray. To you I pray, O Lord. Lord God, Creator, Savior, and Sanctifier, the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. How do you learn? How do you learn? How do you learn? Very important question. Uh, we learn in different ways. But obviously, whatever we learn is taught. Either by teachers, family, the church, even when we read books and we learn things from those books, we've been taught by their authors. Our parents and teachers help us to learn in many ways. Jesus taught us best about God and how we are to live as children of God. Jesus taught us to pray. What stories in the gospel do you know that tell about Jesus teaching his disciples to pray? Um, there are so many places in the scriptures. Uh, if you read Luke chapter 11, that's where Jesus taught his disciples uh, the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father. And if you go to Luke chapter 18, verse 1, it says, we ought to pray always and not to faint. And he taught the parable of the man who, whose friend came at midnight to ask for a favor. And he relates that to how quickly God can answer our prayers. There are so many others that obviously you need to research yourself. But I'm going to invite Mrs. Stever to give us the Bible background as we explore the question or the request of the disciples, Lord, teach us to pray. Bible background. We're on page 226. Faith focus. What does Jesus teach us in the Our Father? Faith vocabulary. In this chapter, rabbi, a Hebrew word meaning teacher, a title of honor and respect in the Bible given to someone whom people trusted to help them understand and live the law of God. Lord's Prayer, a name for the Our Father, the prayer Jesus, our Lord, taught his disciples to pray. Jesus, the teacher. Let's read it together, and I will read it out loud. In Jesus' time, some people were honored with the title of rabbi or teacher. People gathered around such a teacher to understand and live God's law. These people were disciples of that teacher. A disciple is a person who learns from and follows the teachings of another person. Jesus was honored with the title of rabbi 
or teacher. The disciples of Jesus traveled with him. They went to the temple and synagogue with him. All the time they listened and watched. They asked question after question, looking for advice. They trusted him to help them understand and live faithfully the laws and customs of their religion. The disciples of Jesus came to believe that Jesus was the one sent by God to be the Messiah. He was the one who fulfilled the law and everything God had promised to his people. Let's look at the picture at the bottom of the page, and it's a rabbi and a Jewish boy holding the Torah. And this is a time in that child's life that is special in the Jewish faith. Now let's complete, just take a pencil, and just with maybe one word, God is, what are the two things you've learned about God from Jesus? And God is, and then of course, fill in the two times on what you feel you think you've learned about God, but you learned it because Jesus has told us this. I wrote God is good. I've learned that, and I've learned God is love. And maybe you thought those things too, or other things that would be fine to write in there. Let's turn right to the very next page and reading the word of God. Lord, teach us to pray. One day the disciples were with Jesus while he was praying. When Jesus finished praying, one of the disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray. And Jesus replied, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us and do not subject us to the final test. This is scripture according to Luke. When the disciples and the first Christians gathered, they prayed as Jesus taught them. This prayer became known as the Lord's Prayer or the Our Father. In the picture at the bottom right corner, it's a picture of the image of Jesus and his disciples and just what they're learning, the Our Father. He's teaching them how to pray and the Our Father. The Our Father is a prayer that you know and you pray it each week at Mass. And it's a prayer that's very good to pray once a week, every day. It's a wonderful prayer, the Our Father. Father Virgin is, is now going to teach us the next page of the chapter, Understanding the Word of God. Understanding the Word of God, the Our Father. When we pray the Our Father, we tell God he is the center of our lives. We place our trust in him above everyone and everything else. Each time we pray the Our Father, we worship God by honoring and respecting his holy name. We ask God to continue to build his kingdom. We promise God that we want to live as Jesus taught us. We ask God for our daily bread. We ask for all we and others need to live as children of God. We ask God to forgive our sins and to help us forgive others as he forgives us. We remember that Jesus' Jesus is dying 
and being raised from the dead was the greatest sign of God's forgiving love for us. We ask God to help us do good and to avoid sin. We ask God to help us follow Jesus' way of serving others. The Our Father is the prayer of all Christians. Its words teach us both how to pray and how to live as disciples of Jesus. That is why it is called the perfect prayer for Christians. Now here is an activity for you. How are the people in the pictures living the words of the Our Father? Let's begin from the top left corner. Get your pencil or pen or whatever and write in those lines. You see a mother and a, a daughter. Um, how are they living the words of the Our Father? We ask God for forgiveness and we, we forgive those who have offended us. We show God's forgiving love. We show God's love. And I think that's what we see in that picture. They are living the, our father by the mother showing motherly love, uh, which is in itself an expression of the love of the father. And then we see these young people um, doing a food drive, uh, which is a way of helping to provide daily bread uh, for those who have nothing or those who are less privileged. And then we see the family join hands in thanksgiving, and we remember that the first words of the Our Father are words of praise and words of gratitude and thanksgiving, and we see that replicated in this family holding hands and doing the prayer before meals. Now let us look at how our church makes a difference. The gift of hope. The children of Blessed Sacrament Parish learned that over one billion people go to bed hungry every night. They wondered what they could do. After talking with their teacher, they worked with their parents and decided to take part in the Haifa project. People who take part in the Haifa project buy animals that are given to families around the world. These families raise the animals and give the offspring to other families in need. The children of Blessed Sacrament Parish decided to earn enough money to buy two flocks of chicks for a family. They were living their prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. They were given a family the gift of food and the gift of hope. The children of the blesses of Blessed Sacrament Parish, we are teaching everyone that God is at work in the world. He is at work building the kingdom that Jesus thought will one day come about. Then everyone will really know that God is the Father of all people. I want you to look at the first picture. You see the child you know, from Kenya with his, with his goat uh, provided by the Haifa project. And if you look at the bottom right side of the page, page 229, you see this you know, excited, joyful child from the Dominican Republic with a chicken provided by the Haifa project. Now describe some of the people and organizations you know who share the gift of hope with others. Describe some of, of the people organizations you know 
who share the gift of hope with others. We have the parish of the resurrection here uh, with our food pantry, uh, reaching out to those who, are st who have no food or those who are homeless at different levels. Um, I also have a non-profit in Nigeria, uh, Helen's, <laughs> Helen's Women Empowerment Initiative International um, that helps women um, by empowering them with what to do uh, so they can take care of their children. These are the different ways, in small ways, silent ways, that um, different people and maybe all of us are trying to build the kingdom of God on earth. Let us look now at our Catholic identity, the doxology. We pray the, our Father at every Mass. At Mass, we conclude the Our Father by singing or saying aloud, For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. These words are called doxology. A doxology is a prayer of praise. The church has spread this doxology from the early days of the church. I will now invite Mrs. Stever to show us how faith can make a difference in our lives. What difference does faith make in my life? We're on page 230. The Holy Spirit helps you understand, pray, and live the Our Father. We have an activity that you're to do. It says, choose one of the lines of the Our Father. Describe how it helps you live as a follower of Jesus, living the Our Father. So we'll give you an opportunity to complete this activity, get your markers, crayons, whatever you have to draw, and then pause the video, do the activity, and come back and we'll pray together. My faith choice, this week, I will pray the Our Father every day. And it just says, when you do, I will. So maybe put down, when will you do this? When in your life this week, each day, can you create the moment of time to pray the Our Father as you either begin or in the middle of your day or at the early evening or in night? And then make the commitment and do the Our Father, pray the Our Father this week. Father Virginus now will um, join us and we'll pray together on the next page under We Pray the Our Father. We pray the Our Father. The church prays the Our Father every day. Joined together as members of the church, pray as Jesus taught us. I'm the leader, and all of us with Mrs. Steva will also be all. O oh God, by the grace of the Holy Spirit, we call you Father and live as your children. We pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us conclude by praising God. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Okay, we remember, match the words from the Our Father in column A with their meanings in column B. 
We'll do it together. Get your pencil. We'll just read column A. I'll read it out loud and give you some time to then look at column B. And then after, I will tell you what letters are to be in each one. Column A, number one. Hallowed be thy name. And match it with what would it match in column B. Number two. Thy kingdom come. Number three. Give us this day our daily bread. Number four. Forgive us our trespasses. And number five. Deliver us from evil. The correct answers are, Hallowed be thy name, letter B. We give glory to God who is all holy. Thy kingdom come, the letter A. The Holy Spirit works with us to prepare for the coming of the kingdom Jesus began. Letter C, give us this day our daily bread. We trust that God will give us all we need to live as his children. The letter E, forgive us our trespasses. We trust that God will forgive our sins. And the only letter left, the letter D, deliver us from evil, we ask God to help us do good and avoid doing wrong. We ask him to help us follow Jesus' way of serving others. To help you remember, Jesus is our teacher who helps us best understand and live as children of God. Jesus taught us to call God our prayer, Father in prayer, and when we pray the Our Father, we tell God he is the center of our lives. Okay, boys and girls, get your mom or your dad. And we are going to close this chapter. But also, this is the end of your grade five. So stay there and listen to this page with your mom or your dad. Parents, with my family... Read this more thoroughly and live out this week what your children have learned in this chapter. Sharing God's word, read together the Bible story in Luke, and emphasize that Jesus gave us the Our Father to pray. And the prayer on page 231 that we just finished, Father Virginus, myself, and the children, is a prayer that you can do together, the Our Father, Read it and pray it together this week. And then making a difference, they have a couple of opportunities offered here. I highlight the first one. The first Christian communities prayed the Our Father three times a day. Follow the example of the first Christians and do the same this week. It's not a lot if you just even do one in the morning, one in your afternoon, and one in your evening or night. Prayer of the Our Father. We're very, very excited that we've been together this whole year with your children. We have been blessed to have a videographer, Dominic, who has brought us to your children and to you each week. And we're very excited for your children. Father and I have made a sign because now, even though your children are just ending their fourth grade, they've ended a beautiful year of learning more about their faith and learning about themselves and learning together with your family. So, congratulations. And congratulations. You're ready. Yep. For the fifth grade class. You're now in the fifth grade beginning in September. So have a beautiful summer. 
God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much, bless Father Virginis. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Steve. You are so welcome. And thank you, Dominic. Thank you, Dominic. God bless you. God bless you. Amen.